What's up? You want to go burn something down? Hey guys, Georgia here with Laughter Hills Gaming. It's been a minute, but last time we spoke, I was talking to you about the incredible experience of playing Vanille in Final Fantasy and how similar Georgia and Vanille, that's been me, uh, are really, and what an incredible journey that's been to go on and realize all the similarities and explore them as the character grew and I grew. Today, a little different. Today, this one's for all the heisters out there. This one is about Payday 2 and my character Sydney and how we basically couldn't be more different. They say there's a connection between being creative and crazy. Do you believe that's true? There is, I don't think, pretty much anything except the country we're from that makes me and Sydney alike. So I thought it would be fun to explore just some basic like, here are some facts about Sydney and Georgia and Payday 2 and things that went on behind the scenes. Okay, so I would have to start from the beginning. A lovely place to start. Many of you might know the backstory in short. Basically I was working with Starbreeze. Uh, we were getting ready to launch The Walking Dead. May it rest in peace and uh, I was working behind the scenes with him and all that kind of thing. So I knew everybody pretty well who comes to um, LA to work and Almir and I were hanging out in Bo's office. He had just sort of found out that I was a voice actor. I'd been trying to keep it on the DL and it snuck out in the break room at some point and he is a big Final Fantasy fan. So he got really excited and was like, hey, maybe would you wanna do a character in Payday 2, and I was like, oh, buh. and the, you mean the really like violent game you guys have? And he said, yeah, can you swear? And I was like, are you kidding me? Have you seen this new mask? It's fucking twisted. I said, yeah, of course I can. I just really choose not to. And he said, okay, cause you're gonna need to if you're in Payday 2. And he said, are you okay with violence? So we had that conversation. I had a little bit of a home moment and we agreed to go ahead. And then we were like, what can we call her? And he, he said, well, where are you from? And I said, Melbourne. And he goes, hmm, Melbourne doesn't really have a ring to it. And I said, well, maybe like Adelaide? And then he said, what about Sydney? And I was like, hmm. So Melbourne and Sydney have that, that weird rival thing. I was like, okay, fine, Sydney. So we agreed on Sydney and then we started playing with the backstory. So, fun facts about the backstory. We had uh, played with the ideas of where she was from. At first we were looking at Collingwood because I was like, Collingwood, the football team, it's kind of like that area was known when I was growing up as being like the real rough and tough. And then we were like, oh, maybe the gang could be called the Magpies because that's the um, actual Magpie is the Collingwood team. So that's why she's actually a Magpie fan. If you didn't know that, she's a Collingwood fan. But then we decided to make her from Frankston because Frankston's even more kind of like what we call Bogan-ish. You can look that up somewhere on a wiki urban dictionary thing. Um, it's kind of like ugh, white trash plus kind of a bit rough around the edges plus a whole lot of other things. And so we decided Frankston. And I was like, oh, how about we call the gang the Frangers? And I was like, that's a great idea. I love it, the Frangers. So we're like, okay, cool. And they, they all thought, well, that's a bit random, but let's call it the Frangers because no one will know. I come to like a week later and I've called my mom and I'm like, mom, I'm gonna be this character. And she's in the gang, the Frangers. And my mom, of all people, is like, do you know what a Franger is, Georgia? And I was like, what, like, like a frankfurter, like a sausage? And she's like, no, look it up. Oh, I looked it up. We didn't call the gang the Frangers. And then we went back with important and name for the gang for a while. And they ended up going with the Dingoes, which I was like, it's so typical. But anyway. And then, little fun fact, they actually did use my face to create hers, which by the way makes me a little bit concerned because 
She has a very interesting looking face. I didn't know that's what my face looks like. But her face technically is mine. We did the face, facial recognition stuff. So we did all of that next. And then we started working backwards and forwards on backstory. So all you people that say she has no backstory, that was months of writing and going backwards and forwards and editing and changing. So she has backstory, motherfuckers. Anyway, I see you on Twitter. Hmm. They were going off to shoot the uh, live action and I thought, well, I've got to get ready for this. Like we're going to do the whole thing. And of course I'm thinking like, I've seen a picture of her now. She has a big blue mohawk. What are we going to do with that? And little did I know that behind the scenes they'd been having this whole conversation about the mohawk as well. So they had a planning meeting back in Sweden and they were like, great, it's gonna be super cool. What do you think? Do you think Georgia would be willing to like shave the sideburns of her hair and we could actually use her own hair? Cause of course it's pretty tricky to do mohawks and stuff. And the boys were like, yeah, that'll be, I mean, why can't she? It's a character and she should love it. You know, all that kind of thing. And one of the total legends of Starbreeze, she stood up and was like, no. You will not, she is not shaving her head. And uh, so they were like, okay, fine. We won't get her to shave her head. And I literally had my costume ready. I had fittings for the wig. We were all ready to go. I'd had my call time. And then the day of the shoot, they called and said, we've changed our mind. We're not gonna put you in the live action for this time. We're gonna do a animated release. So that's how you got the animated release that came out on May 12th. 2016, I think. So, little known fact, I actually organized Payday Con. Uh, Almir said to me, I wanna do a Payday Con, go for it. In Melbourne, Australia. So I was like, well, I know that place. So that was my crazy invention. And we had a graffiti artist come and paint this awesome picture of Dallas and he was there. And if you've ever seen the video or photos, I have never seen people dance with such passion and so much sweat in my entire life. My brother was the photographer and he pulled me aside at some point and he goes, these people are the most passionate fans I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I was like, yeah, that's Payday 2 fans. Here's something that I learned about my Payday fans. Well, I, not my Payday fans, but like our Payday 2 fans. About you guys, the bloody awesome human beings that love Payday 2. So, Starbreeze also did something really cool. In 2016, in December, I decided to swim a really, 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 really long way to raise money for children. So I run a number of nonprofits and I wanted to make people aware of what it's like to live in poverty and used a swim that I didn't know if I could complete to try and make it happen, blah, 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 blah. blah. Anyway, Almir and Starbreeze decided to do a fundraiser for me to help raise this money, which moved my heart beyond all, it popped out of my Sydney vest so much because we have made a video and we created a Sydney mask, a mega mask, and we were gonna say $10. For every $10, you get a mask and uh, the donation goes towards the swim. So on the day of the swim, I think there was like a thousand and two hundred donations. Over a thousand of them came ba came from you guys, from our Starbreeze and Payday 2 fan club team family. You were the ones that donated the most of the money and Starbreeze matched it to a certain level to bring me over my amount. And I ended up raising $34,000 that day and the majority of that came from you guys. So I have so much love for my Payday 2 fans. The fact that I would, or family, I keep calling you fans, like look at me, I'm gonna lose fans. Really, you're Payday 2 fans and I just get to be part of the family. But, point being, that, you made it happen. Anyway, you guys are also legends because I would say on average of like $300 to $500 a month is still raised because of Starbreeze's amazing idea to do this fundraiser and your incredible awesomeness, wanting to get the mask for one, and two, donating to us at Arts Bridging the Gap. So thank you so much. Okay. 
I have to say though, I've never actually played the game. And there's a reason for that. Not because I don't think it's great. I think it's a wonderful game. I've watched many, many heists happen, but I am a chicken and I'm like a little kid. And if I happen to play the game and then go to bed and dream about the game, I literally will wake up with a little kid wanting to scream, so sure that that's all happened. So I have to protect myself. But this is where I talk about where I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't be more different. So here you've got this anarchist heister from Australia who, well that part's the same, who basically left because Australia wasn't bad enough for her and moved to join this gang and is totally anti-police and all of the like anti-establishment. And here you have this human being who believes in magic, rainbows, lollipops, happiness, sunshine, love, kindness, non-violence, is terrified of bucking authority, has spent a lot of her life trying to get over her need to please everybody, who has long blonde hair, not a blue mohawk, although I did have a mohawk for a while. Oh yeah, payday three. Should I? Let's do it. Okay, so no, I don't really know anything about payday three and I can't really tell you about console updates or any of that stuff, except I do know this, that at the end of last year, was it? Gosh, was it really? Um, I got together with Dallas and Chains and Almir and Mikhail and Andreas and a few other folks and we talked about what next. And so we have been trying to create the what next of Payday 2, Payday 3, as they develop it and it's happening, what are we gonna do for you guys? So I guess if we wanna do something for you guys, you should probably tell us what you want. So my last fact is actually a question. I want you to come in under here nicely, please. Please send me comments, thoughts, ideas, things you wanna see. Is it more live action? Is it um, a, like in between storylines, something or other you want to do? What do you want to see in Payday 3? What do you want the development to be? What are the things you're missing? What are you crying out for? Be nice about it, please. Bye guys, keep playing, keep heisting, and I'll see you next time. Georgia for Lofty Hills Gaming, bye.